Hey folks, um, just real quick, um, this is that old Castile that I had made, um, a couple days ago, um, I did the small video series, or two part video series on Glycerin Method Castile Soap, um, I had mentioned that I had other plans for it, and today I'm finally getting the, uh, motivation to do it, um, my other plans for this is to, um, to drop the pH on this soap. Um, right now this is its its resting pH. You can see what the temperature is on it. So at room temperature, that is the soap's pH naturally. Um, the original recipe for this was uh, 16 ounces of olive oil pomace. Um, I did a 2% lye discount with my calculator. But then I also turned around and added an extra two ounces of olive oil as a super fat. Um, so even though when this was hot, it was clear, it's actually, I think, a little, yeah, it is cloudy, light, lightly cloudy, murky-ish now because of the two ounces extra of super fatting I did. And that is probably why the resulting pH is the slow, um, which is freaking amazing, you know to know that death, that there, you know, is a definite direct correlation with adding extra oils and attaining a lower pH in your soap, we, better be it that it's a bar soap or a liquid soap. Um, so I assume that for all those soapers out there that, you know, like to say that they get their soap at a pH of seven, I can honestly see how they do it now. Probably because of the excess super fats, and a lot of them use sodium lactate or uh, just sodium lactate or stearic acid in their soaps um, for various reasons. But those are um, buffers and in acid, and they do affect the pH. Um, but also, you know, a lot of soapers do, you know, super fats, and some super fats are pretty major, you know, anywhere between 5 to 20 percent. So that 20 percent super fat is, is pretty significant, I believe. I've never actually calculated how significant a 20 percent super fat is, as far as the lie discount is concerned, um, and how much actual free fats are left over at the end of a... Uh, you know, full saponification. Um, that's math. Me and math don't do well. I'm surprised I'm doing okay with chemistry right now, considering that does involve math, but I'm trudging through. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm just uh, showing you all its current resting natural pH. Oh, it turned off. Turn it back on. It's gonna shoot back up and then it'll go down. Or, well, sometimes it'll go down and then shoot back up. Um, and then go back down. It's really weird. Um, but anyways, uh, this, well, you saw before it turned off what its uh, resting pH is, which was a 9.15. So, just to start out, this is my starting pH. Um, I'm going to be using various acids. I'm going to be using primarily citric acid because that is something that is available to everybody very easily. You can get it in your grocery store, in your canning or baking section, or you can purchase it in larger quantities online through various, you know, chemical supply resources or soap making resources or, you know, whatever you use to get your soap making and cosmetic supplies from. Um, I'm also going to be using uh, lauric acid as well um, in, in lieu of stearic acid. Uh, lauric acid is actually uh, one of the fatty acids found in coconut oil, the primary fatty acid in coconut oil um, that contributes to bubbles and its cleansing factor. Um, apparently it also lightens the um, amber or dark tan color of, of soap, especially in liquid soap. Oh, primarily, okay, only in liquid soap. Let me start over. The lauric acid apparently, according to one supplier, um, the one only supplier that I could find online that sells it in a small enough quantities, um, they said that using lauric acid is supposed to lighten up the natural coloring of liquid soap. Um, 
I don't know if that's true. I've used my lauric acid a couple of times and I didn't pay attention to color differences. That's not what my aim was. I was actually working on something else again with it. Um, but I might take note of that later on. Um, I might take pictures as well of the before and after. Obviously, I'm going to take more pictures of the before and after just so, you know, I have it documented and, you know, I can, you know, definitely say next time I recommend using lauric acid that it does do this. Um, I think using the lauric acid with the, the olive oil soap might also be beneficial as far as, um, Rather than, you know, some people want to use detergents to boost the foaming properties of soap, I'm using a natural fatty acid found in soap and soap making and the oils that we use to boost or contribute to foaming. Um, glycerin method soaps generally have tons of bubbles anyway, but as I, draw, as I lower the pH, there is a possibility that I risk losing that property. Um, Every soap recipe is different, and I've learned that Castile soap doesn't like being tampered with too much. So as I work with it, I'm hoping that I can maintain some of its bubbling property, even if it's just a mild, low lather or low bubbling. I, I don't care. I just I want to maintain some of it, um, rather than just having a goop in a bottle that gets spread on a poof and spread all over the body. People like bubbles, I like bubbles. So, you know, I wanna maintain that property. Huh, that's odd, it's still going down. I'm just noticing, I just looked down to see that the, the pH is still going down. Huh, anyways, so that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna get to work. Um, uh, obviously, you know, only time you're going to, and, and I'm not even going to do it for this whole batch. I'm going to be taking out a sample because I don't want to ruin this. If I can't do it with, you know, a sample, I at least still have this nice whole batch to work with. And the pH is still, that's pretty good. You know, 9.12 is freaking amazing, you know, to have it naturally done. Um, I also will be working with polysorbate 80. This stuff right here. Um, polysorbate 80, or any of the polysorbates is a solubilizing agent. Um, it's used mostly by people who deal with the essential oils and stuff. They use it to um, maintain clarity in their stuff, especially like room sprays, but you know, also used in liquid soap and, and things like that. And what I'm going to use is use the polysorbate filler is when I drop this pH, more fatty acids are going to be released. So this soap will again, through the process, it'll change. Um, it will go through a bit of a reverse saponification, releasing the fatty acids, releasing um, hydroxide ions. Uh, well, pot not hydroxide. Uh, it'll be releasing like potassium ions, and I guess some of the hydroxide and, and basically citric acid and, and the lauric acids are going to combine with these free ions and such to create different. I don't want to say chemicals, different chemicals, different substances within the soap. Um, but the most importantly is the free fatty acids, which mar the clarity of the soap. Um, and that's what the polysorbate is for. It's to help solubilize everything and bring out its clarity. If I wanted to right now, I could use the polysorbate in this batch since it is cloudy and that'd be done. But I don't want to do that. I, I want to trudge on with what I've challenged myself to do several months ago, and that's seeing if I can achieve a lower, closer to neutral pH. I'm not going to bank on a 7, because getting closer to that 7 is much more difficult and requires more material, and I don't want to use excessive amounts of acid, excessive amounts of this, that, and the other, to the point where it's like, okay, 10% of my recipe, or 20% of my recipe is citric acid. No, <laughs> I don't want to do that. So I'm going to get as close to seven as possible with materials and the amounts that I feel comfortable with, and I will report back. Um, there is no farce. This is not a farce. Um, 
Now there's my soap. You can see how cloudy it is just looking at it dribbling off the off the meter. Um, so I will be ecstatic if I'm able to achieve this. Um, and uh, anyways, I will check back in probably in a, about a day or two. Till then, take care. So real quick, um, I lied. I said I wasn't coming back until I was done. I lied. Um, this is the sample, the eight ounce sample of liquid soap of my uh, Castile that I, I took out of my pot. Um, as you see, it's pretty murky right now still. Um, originally, I did a uh, two to one water to citric acid ratio where I mixed two ounces of acid to four ounces of water. I added a half ounce of citric acid solution to this eight ounce batch of soap. And then I further added another half ounce of lauric acid to this to fully withdraw the pH. Um, I don't know where it was sitting. I don't know where it's sitting now. <laughs> I do know that it was close to seven when I last looked. But that was before I added it, the final small dose of the lauric acid to get a total of half an ounce. Um, right now I'm working with the polysorbate 80. I'm up to two ounces of polysorbate 80 in this. Um, it's not as milky as it was before. Um, it's trying to clear up. What I've done is pretty much I've let it sit. Um, so it'll sit and then it'll clear up a little bit. And I think that's what I'm going to do is just let it sit overnight to do its thing and see how clear it'll get on its own. Might, you know, stop by and stir it up a little bit. You know, every time I come by it in the kitchen, but other than that, I'm not gonna do anything significant. Um, just a key note, um, when you're dropping pH in Castile soap, and I guess with any soap, but specifically Castile, um, it curdles, like, severely. Don't freak out about it. Just hit it with your stick blender to break up the curdles and mix it all back together. And when I say mix, I mean it's not really going to mix back in and it's all good. It, it'll eventually float out to the top if you let it sit for a while. But it just, it breaks up the curdles and it smooths it all out back together for, you know, a temporary emulsion, um, so to speak. So, don't fret when you see the curdles when you're dropping your pH, especially in a Castile soap. Castile behaves very poorly with being tampered with. Um, so, uh, that being said, I figured I'd throw that in there. Um, I'm just noting my progress right now. Um, now, so I you know, can be seen where I'm at. I'm, I'm waiting for you know this polysorbate to do its thing. Um, I'm, I'll check back in tomorrow with more results. Later. Okay, good evening folks. So, um, I'm back with my test sample and I've already dropped my meter in. And as you can see, it is retardedly clear. Like. Okay, you can see through it. This is clarity. This is clear. So, um, my cup is, is opaque. So, but even still, it's clear. That is awesome. That is totally awesome. So, um, as I indicated before, I was using polysorbate 80 to clarify the soap and so utilize all the free fats after lowering the pH. Um, this is where it is sitting right now. That is its room temperature pH right now. There we go. Uh, six point, really? You saw that, 6.56. Six uh, okay, temperature is 74, about 75 degrees. Um, 
I'm going to raise that up a little bit because I don't want it that low. And I can easily do that with just like a flake or two of hydroxide later on. Or, you know, I can just not, I don't know, this is just the sample. I can always throw this out. My main batch is over there in the pot right there still. So see, look, when you run experiments, make sure you take out samples so you don't ruin an entire batch. Um, I might play with that a little bit, see how it works out. But anyways, we're gonna do the hand washing test just to see how it bubbles. Um, as I indicated, I didn't expect it to bubble after lowering the pH. Yeah. Set this right here. There we go. Yeah, no bubbles. Like very, very minuscule to none. Get a little bit between the fingertips, that's about it. Um, it washes away really clean, but not squeaky clean like a uh, high pH soap does, or the high pH liquid soap does. Um, my hands feel really soft, and they, wow, it just it feels nice. Um, there you go. Let's do what it does. Putting some in the sink. It's like little bits of bubbles. Like it thinks about doing stuff. I was able to lower it and it still cleans which is what soap is supposed to do it still cleans my hands are well duh my hands are clean they don't feel slimy or slippery um, they look dry well aside from the water on them but I mean they don't look slimy or gross they don't feel gross um, they don't feel stripped which is an amazing feeling. Um, I am gonna throw some hydroxide into this, maybe tonight, just to see what it does. How much do I have left in this cup? I still have a little bit over eight ounces, but anyways, I'm gonna throw a little bit of hydroxide, a little bit less than eight ounces actually. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna throw some hydroxide into this cup and see what it does to the pH, and maybe that might improve some of the bubble, the bubbliness um, to it. As far as cleansing is concerned, this this cleaned, this cleaned very well, and it felt really good on my hands. So, if I were to say that it is still soap at that low of a pH, which again, I will show it here. I would say yes, it is still soap with a pH of 6.56. It still cleaned my hands. It didn't have bubbles. I mean, we all know that bubbles, you know, as soap makers, bubbles does not, do not mean clean. It just, it's, it's how we've been programmed to associate with soap or any cleanser for that matter. Um, kind of liken it to um, like certain face washes. Some of them don't bubble, but they have cleansers in them that are very mild. They're non-foaming cleansers. So this is what I would liken 
that too. If I were to compare this to a commercial product, I would compare it to a non-foaming cleanser with a beautiful pH. Um, it's clear as I have been trying to achieve. Um, my next go round in the main batch, I am going to try to use less citric acid. I'm going to adjust my proportions of the citric acid and the lauric acid. Um, just because I want more of the lauric acid in it. Possibly. I don't know. But I will be making, you know, adjustments to how much I've used. Because the pH here is technically too low for my taste. Um, this is where we would get into the world of using surfact or not surfactants, uh, preservatives because the harmful microbes that we worry about in cosmetics thrive in acidic pH ranges. Um, I will consider a preservative later on, but right now I'm more concerned with getting this experiment to be successful and to actually have a functioning soap with a low pH. It seems like I've done the job. Um, I will be continuing to work with this, um, finding ways to have that happy balance between a lower pH and still maintaining bubbles. Who knows? Um, but it looks like it looks like I, I've proved them wrong. I've been told that it cannot happen, and I've done it. So, I, I don't even know what else to say. Um, I'm still doing some a little bit of reading on polysorbate itself and how it functions and how to best use it. I found out today that, um, when used in hot solutions, it actually, or in any solution that has polysorbate in it, um, turns cloudy when it's heated up. So, you know, my common, my common go-to when I add, you know, ingredients to my soap is to heat it up so it better disperse it as well. Because it was heated up, the soap remained cloudy and this is now at room temperature and cooled down and it's clear. Um, I don't know if the original soap's cloud factor will still take place, i.e. Um, the temperature rate related cloud factor where when it gets cold, the soap gets cloudy. I don't know. I might find out later. I might not. I mean, I don't exactly keep my house cold. I mean, I guess if I stick it in the fridge, I'll find out <laughs> that way. Um, but as it stands, I've done it. Um, again, I know there's no bubbles, but Castile soap never really bubbled to begin with. So this is nothing new to me. Um, I know using the glycerin method is supposed to produce, you know, more bubbles. And, you know, if it were the higher pH, it would. But right now it doesn't, and it's pretty much just like having regular Castile soap. Um, I will continue using Glycerin Method on my Castile soap because it does bring... It is a humectant. It will still act as a humectant. And there's more to it than just being, you know, a bubble creator. It will still act as a humectant. It will still impart clarity to the soap. I mean, it will help. If anything, the polysorbate compared with the Glycerin will definitely help impart more clarity at the lower pH ranges and especially when I have to deal with the extra fats, you know, whether I naturally super fat by adding extra oils or if I super fat by dropping the pH. I mean, in, in any case, I win on this one in any way I look at it and I'm happy with it. I'll continue to still working on it because I do want to perfect it so it is consistent across the board. But as it stands, I've done what I set out to do two, two or three months ago, and here it is. So I'm going to try.
turn that back on because I want to take an actual picture picture of it. later with a uh, final thought on this um, with my main batch or might not I'm not sure yet um, if you don't see anything more after this part then no worries um, I'm rambling y'all have a good night thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me um, I'm proud of what I've done so far. I can't complain, right? <laughs> Ciao. Okay, so I'm at it again. I know I'm crazy. I don't know how to stay away from this thing, but I like documenting what I'm doing. And so far, I am nuts for what I'm doing here. Um, I added a little bit of a hydroxide paste to it that I just made up. And I am ecstatic because the pH is actually going up a little bit. Um, hmm. Oh, god dang it, I don't need my little whisk thingy getting submerged. This up for now. That was just an amazing thing I just saw. Um, like I said, I'm trying to bring the pH back up. I have not lost any clarity still, which is good because we don't want to lose this lovely, lovely clarity. And I've been adding this little solution in like half milliliter increments. No, I'm not weighing this out, I'm using volume at this point. Um, it looks like it's trying to get thicker as well. Like, this is interesting. Not how much thicker, well it's not thicker, thicker, like, I don't know, it looks like it's trying to turn into a gel. And I'm about to pull out the little emulsion blender I have. I have a little mini emulsion blender here. Set you down here for a hot minute. Stay. Um, And you see how it's bubbling in there? So it's trying to do something. It really is. That's amazing. Still not budging. Um. <laughs> well, now, guess it is budging. Um. Just a smidge. Solution. I'm gonna just drop this back. I don't even know how much of a little solution I have left in here. Um, I'm just gonna slowly 
raise this back up, but it looks like I might be getting some bubbles back after all. Um, look, look, they look like some heavy duty bubbles in there, look at that. And it's still clear, it's just there's all these bubbles in it. Um, the pH is creeping up. I know I can't stay away from it, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm like addicted to getting this just right. But the fact remains, I, I've proven that we can have soap at an acidic pH. And even better is it's a Castile. Like Castile is so difficult to work with. Um, I, I'm, I'm pleased with what I've, I've managed to do here. Um, drop that last bit in there. I can mix up a little bit more of the hydroxide in a minute. But anyways, um, I'm gonna keep working on this bit by bit. And I guess we'll see you all again tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but here you go. There's an update of what I'm doing to it. Later. Alrighty. So, this is the final result of all my work. Um, it's very dense. It's more like a gel. Um, But it is a clear gel. Um, so I've achieved that. I've achieved clarity. Um, last night I went ahead and added a little bit of a hydroxide solution to raise the pH and I'm going to give it its final check right now. Let that hang out there for a minute. And just to curtail some things that a lot of folks like to say about phenol drops. Um, because apparently, you can have a low pH and still have free lie, which I'm going to tell you that's a load of BS. Because uh, lye in solution is very alkaline and very dangerous. pH is settled at 7.62. Um, I am actually okay with that because it's still, you know, much closer to neutral, um, which is obviously much better for the skin. Here's the soap. It's full of little tiny bubbles. They're not like uber micro bubbles that I absolutely detest because that mars the clarity, makes it hard to tell if it's free fats or bubbles. And here we go, phenol drops go again. I'm putting a whole lot of drops into that sample. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna swirl it around. Not a lick of pink. So whoever says that 
you can have a low pH and still have free life. Mm -hmm. Pardon my French, but they're a crock of shit. And as you see, there's bubbles. They're not gonna stick around too long because we have hard water. And look, it's going down on its own. But um, I've already performed a hand wash test on, on it when it was a lower pH. I guess I can do a quick one right now. Just to see, just to show you all how it works on the hands, because that's what's going to matter the most, right? So let me set you up right here. Take a sample out of the cup. I'm just going to smear a little bit on my hand. A little bit of bubbling, so that definitely approved by just raising the pH just a little bit. Um, like I said, I don't expect it to bubble a whole lot. The olive oil soap and olive oil soap doesn't bubble very well. Paired with us having hard water, yeah, it's, it's not. I didn't expect much from that, but it did slightly improve compared to last night when the pH was below a seven. So, it still feels nice on my hands. It doesn't overly cleanse. It's not slimy like most olive oil is. Um, I think, for the most part, I have I've done it. Oh, that's not good. I have successfully created a soap and lowered the pH to a more closer to neutral level. Um, that is its pH at room temp. And uh, I was still able to maintain some bubbliness. It still cleans, which is what soap does. And so I think I have, um, successfully proven after two or three months of research and a headache that you can make a soap that is neutral and therefore a lot safer and nicer to the skin. Um, if I wanted to, I could throw in like another smidge of freaking citric acid or lauric acid to this and hey look, I'll have it a perfect seven. Am I really going to freak out about that? No, I'm not. I'm not going to you know, get all neurotic about that. The point is, is that I've done it. I even got it below a seven, and it still cleaned. It still wasn't a goopy mess. It was still soap. It did its primary purpose, and that was to clean. Um, so, uh, so for the final results of this, I basically, well, for this, to summarize what I've done, I've made a 16 ounce olive oil pomace batch, glycerin method. I did a lye discount of 2%, and then I went ahead and super fatted with an extra two ounces of oil that did not get run in the calculator, so it is an actual true super fat. I then cooked for 12 hours. Um, tested the pH. Uh, its resting pH was, oh god, I can't even remember what its final cooked pH was, but it was about 9.5 ish when it was finally diluted with 45 ounces of water three days later. It had a final resting pH of 9.16. If my memory serves me correctly, I have everything written down and documented with photos and video and everything, so I can always go back to that and, and refer to it. Um, that is the starting pH I went from when I began lowering the pH. 
I used one half ounce of a two to one water to citric acid solution and a half ounce of lauric acid, which subsequently lowered the pH below a seven. It was about a 6.5 plus or minus 0 0.02 points. Um, I added two ounces of polysorbate 80 to the hot solution and waited for it to cool down. Um, I have it documented that it did clear the solution um, and still maintained its final pH. I turned around and added a little bit of a hydroxide solution, very scant. I didn't even bother measuring it too much. It was a very scant solution added to this sample, um, which raised the pH up to what you've just seen it as, which was 7.5 plus or minus 0 0.02 points. Um, raising the pH caused it to gel. I assume that the little bit of hydroxide I added paired with the lauric acid that I used to drop the pH. Um, lauric acid does act as a thickener. And um, as you see here, the claim that it lightens the color of liquid soap is true. Um, if you remember at the beginning of this, the color was more of a dark amber and now it is more of a light golden color. I don't want to say honey because it's not honey, but it's a much lighter color compared to what it was originally. So I basically ended up making a gel because of the lauric acid. And um, again, I do have clarity. Just show that here. Sorry, the camera, there we go. Much better focus. I do have a clear gel, and it does still clean. The bubbles were improved, not by much, but it was expected considering the circumstances it's put under. And I overall have achieved a neutral pH, a true neutral pH for this sample. Um, this was an eight ounce sample taken from my primary batch, so I didn't ruin an entire batch were this to fail. Um, what does this mean for liquid soap makers? It means that yes, we can achieve a neutral pH. Yes, you can achieve clarity. And yes, it will still clean and it will still be soap despite, um, I don't want to call them rumors, but despite what the apparent popular belief is in the soap making community. Um, for the bar soakers that make soap and claim their soap is, you know, neutral, they are right. However they do it, they achieve it and more power to them because they probably don't even know that they're trying. Um, <laughs> Um, what this also means for liquid soapers is that it cannot be done naturally. You can't cook the soap to the point where it maintains a neutral pH, a true neutral pH. Um, it's just, it's no way, no way to do it. I've tried, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. It just, it's not happening. 
Um, the only way it can be done is by dropping the pH. And in order to deal with the free fatty acids, you have to solubilize them back into the soap using any number of solubilizers that are on the market. Um, the most recommended and cheapest is a polysorbate. The best polysorbate to use for liquid soap would be the polysorbate 80 because that's best for the carrier oils, which is what we use in soap making, whereas polysorbate 20 is best for essential oils and fragrance oils. Um, you can also try hydrogenated castor oil. Um, I believe that is a little bit more pricier than polysorbate and less available to us, but it is another option. And then there are, of course, many, many other more naturally derived options compared to what examples I just gave. Um, there were some that I found that were EcoCert, but having read, you know, other folks's, you know, trials and errors with them, it's said that they don't impart the clarity that we want as far as, you know, a clear solution. Um, as in they're not as good. So. Um, or if you don't want to use acids to lower the pH, which is what I've done, you can try adding more oils um, to your batches. Basically doing a true super fat or doing a lie discount. Um, in the case of this particular batch where the natural pH for Castile soap runs around 10-ish, adding the extra two ounces of olive oil to the cook lowered the pH significantly on its own. So that is proof that adding extra fatty acids be it extra oils or using steric acid or lauric acid or using the meristic acids, any of the fatty acid chains, just adding more of those to your batch will lower the pH naturally without using citric acid or boric acid or other things like that. Um, they are probably less likely to curdle the soap as well. I noticed that citric acid curdled this soap, whereas the lauric acid did not. So that might be something to keep in mind when choosing an acid or a buffer. Um, but again, if you wanted to naturally lower the pH, you can you just add more oils. So just super fat and then solubilize the super fats. Or you can use an emulsifier and make it into a creamy soap. Although most emulsifiers have conditioning effects, so it might actually be counterproductive when it comes to a soap. But definitely a solubilizer, and especially if you want to try to achieve a clear soap at lower pHs. Um, I've also shown that despite some misinformation that I've noted across different forums and boards, that apparently some people think that the phenolphthalein drops are used to test for free lye, and that there's this miscon misconception that you can have free lye and still have a low pH. That is not true, as I've just proven. Um, because if that were the case, then the last solution that I added last night would not have the 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 the, acid, the, the last solution I added last night would have been detected by the phenolphthalein drops, and in all honesty, the pH would have been a lot higher um, if it was technically free lye. Um, I don't believe there is such thing as free lye when it comes to soap it's going to bond with something in the solution or, or in the soap itself. It's going to bond with a fatty acid. It's going to bond with 
whatever you add to your soap, it's going to bond with it. Um, the question would be, how long does it take to fully bond so it's no longer caustic and alkaline? Um, that's where, you know, the process of saponification takes place and time plus heat and et cetera, et cetera, comes into play. For a fully cured, fully saponified, not caustic batch of soap. Um, I'm probably going to start on my primary batch today. And I probably will not, I don't know. But, and, and, and I do have some adjustments to make to the acid amounts that I use because I don't want the pH to fall below a seven again. That was, that was pretty, pretty epic on, on that note. So I do have to play with my acid amounts, but I do have a base to start with, so. Next time I'll start a little bit smaller and, and work from there. Um, as for the polysorbate, I had to use around 22%. Um, what I didn't know about polysorbate is that when it is in a solution that is hot, it turns cloudy. And so because I was using it in a hot solution in order to help disperse it better, it remained cloudy. And I didn't know this until I did some reading later on in a couple of medical journals. So as it cooled down, it actually cleared up. But by then, I had used 22 to 25% polysorbate, thinking it wasn't working and I needed more. So this goes back to my lack of patience and reaffirms the patience is key in soap making. And there are some things you can rush, but there are other things that are just out of your control and you cannot rush. Um, so I will definitely be starting with a smaller amounts of polysorbate and allowing the batch to cool and allowing it time to do what it needs to do. I believe that's it. Um, if anyone has any ideas that they want to add, you are more than welcome to do so. You'll leave comments below the video, or you can find me in the Liquid Soap Makers group on Facebook. And if anything, happy soaping.